rolls zero and um, again I just want to get all the formalities all out of the way uh, just in general so hang on for a second okay formalities um, uh, you know give it a shout out to Shin he's a uh, He's uh, really, um, or really uh, valuable to me as a moderator and a, um, and a, as a friend. Um, shout out, oops. shout out to Shrimpy because um, um, he's not a mod yet, but he's a he's a pretty good guy, and um, his streams are I think I think are pretty wonderful. Um, and last shout out again is um. I don't like Overwatch, but at the very least, you know, check out the, uh, uh, check out the petition because, um, it, uh, you know, it's, it's special to somebody, so, you know, just check it out, and, and um, if you want to support that type of thing, so, um, the subject or topic for the day is, uh, is about Mass Effect 3, and, um, it's um thank you Shen um yeah! and uh in question it's just um uh, uh what's it called oops thank you um But yeah, uh, uh, Mass Effect 3 multiplayer is very special, or actually what, uh, what I want to talk about, um, the whole thing is, uh, sorry, let me, let me get my thoughts collected first before I say anything else. Um, I think I was going to say, uh, you know, for the uh why i put the ending thing up there is just um you know a lot of people are upset about the ending and are still upset about the ending you know um you just gotta grow up and just don't don't think about all the negative stuff that um uh that you know if you enjoy the game wholeheartedly you know there's no reason to be upset about one facet of the game you know that you think is is you know is bothersome so just uh you know just honestly forget about it and um yeah so just it's honestly just you know just let it go um so the go on about mass effect 3 um uh multiplayer is a uh, it was very special to me um i i did play mass effect 1 and 2 um but uh i just i didn't want to play any of the single player for mass effect 3 and i honestly that's the truth um because unfortunately, well, it was just it, kind of in general. I didn't play Mass Effect Three multiplayer until for a while because I was kind of, I don't know, I think I was getting disinterested in games for that for a while, and um, I think and you know unfortunately I was one of those people that heard about the ending. I was like, eh, well, but then I played uh, mu uh, you know multiplayer exclusively. I think when the you know, Earth DLC came out or whatever with all the. Um, in seven enforcers and specialists and all that and um it was just really um special to me um oh Sh shrimpy if you're in the chat um uh, if you wanted the the host or whatever too then uh that's my um uh that's my graphic for hosting too i i love it so it's a it's a gift from um the japanese line um uh uh, gosh, what's it called? Japanese Line uh, app, which is like a almost like a Japanese like or Asian um, messaging service too. So I, I really like that GIF. Um, uh, what I was gonna say or continue from there was um, but yeah, Mass, Mass Effect Three multiplayer. I think it's that um, why I found it so magical was um, you know you get to play as anybody you want. I think that's why I was so you know, um, gosh, I can't think of it, like, maybe enamored with it, because, um, it, it was, it was very special, it was, um, you know, um, in the, in the sense of the Mass Effect single player, you're stuck as Shepard, and 
you know that's that's neat that's okay and but then with you know multiplayer you can play as a lot of other people and um and um the image right there is is one of the characters i unlocked and i know it's like that was that was one of the minor well never mind not minor but significant problems where um you know you get a lot of duplicates and you may not necessarily have had the chance to unlock all characters so which i i know that was a a slight problem so um but yeah uh Right, right. That that was a that was a huge thing, especially I think it was um Sol Solarian, right? The the one that lived for forty years and Asari and there was Krogans and what else was there? I can't think of it at the top of my head, but um but no you're right, Shrimpy. Um they yeah they had they had tons to choose from, and even though unfortunately when you did get a duplicate at the very least it allowed you to have more color options for the said character so, um, but yeah I I don't remember um when or where if the Volus update was the last update to the game, cause I remember uh there was like. I think one, oh wait, there was, I forgot, there was Geth too, and there was like a collector or a Prothean type character as one of the last DLC batches, and then there was a, uh, there was the model of, um, whatever the, uh, computer lady was called, or robot lady was called, um, Eva or Ava or something like that. <sighs> Um, oh wait, I just said the same thing. Um, kind of. Um, and then, uh, there was, I remember, yeah, there was a guest juggernaut, a lot of people liked to pick that character. And then there was the, uh, the Hammer, uh, Krogan, which I always thought it was kind of, um, messed up because the, the, the guest juggernaut could not be insta-killed, but the, the Krogan, uh, battle master, I think that's what it was called. They could be picked up and executed, so that was that was always an annoyance. Um, but uh, but yeah, you got a lot of variety out of the multiplayer. Um, you had a uh, there was a lot of uh, cool weapons to choose from, especially the uh, the I can never remember the names except for probably the N seven Typhoon, which was that like light machine gun with the riot shield on it, which looked dumb but also was amazing i um probably my favorite thing to do each time was or for most matches would play the inside shadow with both the typhoon and the uh piranha shotgun so um and i know it was like you were really happy with two weapons but like eh, i didn't care i didn't i didn't use the uh um uh the powers too much except for the stealth and the um and the uh the uh tell the teleport chop because uh, I I really didn't like the um uh the shadows and the um uh what's it called the vanguard uh class uh for the um biotic and shock uh uh shockwaves or whatever uh, or biotic and tech shockwaves because those were, those were if you, if you kept on doing them in the same like place it would, sh uh, sh um, you know, uh, move the camera a lot, and um, it got really annoying. <laughs> so I, I didn't, I didn't like those powers too much. Um, I know it was like um, Shrimpy, if you remember too, as well, is that you know you you, it was fun to be a vanguard, but also vanguard had <laughs> a real big problem is that you know you would charge all over the place and then. Sometimes you would get down, right? And then you'd be, like, underneath the level or outside of bounds, and and then, like... And then you would just, you would just break, and you wouldn't be in the level at anymore. And it was... I, th I think that was just the funniest shit that they, they never fixed. And, um... To, to, yeah, to this... Um, again, I never played it recently, but I, I don't think they ever fixed it. It's probably the... 
the uh, the funniest glitch I ever did see, besides some of the uh, glitches I have on my YouTube channel, like the one where I toss Count Dooku in a tree. Um, but uh, oh uh, yeah, uh, gosh, what is what else? Um, all right, uh, in Seven Typhoon, in Seven Piranha was pretty cool. Um, I know. It'd probably be jealous for some people, but I think I got the uh, Paladin the tin, and even I didn't. That gun's all right. I just remember that, like, I just that was not you know the top list of it. Yeah, you know, I didn't even have all the uh, weapons yet, so I wanted. I don't you know want a, uh, one of the uh, highest damage hand cannons to be tin. So, um, what else was amazing about the uh, uh multiplayer um again i i think again i picked the n7 shadow so much not for it's um not for the characters um technical or powers abilities just for the the sword i i love going toe to toe with the um uh what's what's it called the uh the ones that insta kill you i think they're maybe called phantoms or something like that it's it's been a while um but i i loved going toe to toe with um and uh and uh using the sword against them so that was always a a fun thing um it kind of brings me to the um vanguard of the n7 class and I'm, I'm really sorry i can't think of the name i just remember i named him hans i thought hans at the time was a good character name and i forgot i i don't remember if i spelled it with a z i remember again like uh um with the volus there and volus was volus was another great class even though they it was really difficult to play as them. I, you know, once they release the Volus, I kind of wish they would release an Elkor class. You know, those um those elephant type characters in the uh, in the um in the uh, Citadel and all that. So yeah, I I really wanted a Elkor class eventually, but maybe maybe for Mass Effect Five or maybe for the uh, a possible trilogy remastered. I hope. Uh, if you're still here, uh, Shrimpy, I kind of hope that, um, that Mass Effect 5 or other, the trilogy will still have multiplayer because I, you know, I think that that's great. Um, other than that, um, uh, that's all I can say about Mass Effect 3. It was, um, I think most, if all, not all, the N7 classes were great. Um, again, uh, the N7 Fury was always cool. I know it's like, more or less, they were characters that had a lot of assets from, you know, uh, Kasumi, the Japanese lady, in Mass Effect 2. But at the very least, it was still cool. I still enjoyed it. Um, um, unfortunately, <laughs> probably my favorite weapon, or my probably my, one of my other favorite weapons that I know is really difficult to use, and I know it's probably don't uh, a lot of people don't like it, but... I I love the Keyshock Harpoon Gun. The Keyshock Harpoon Gun was probably one of the goofiest weapons to use, and it was it was great to get a kill with it because then the the uh, the body would go nuts. It's like you hook hooked a whopper and all that. So, um, but yeah, key, Keyshock Harpoon Gun I I absolutely love. Um, and yeah, I I guess that's the um. Oh my gosh, what what else would there be amazing about Mass Effect Three? Um, besides, oh yeah, I think. Um, sorry, kind of going back to naming conventions. Oh wait, right, right, because I I don't know. I don't know if it's a priority for them, because again, you know, this I I think I saw that some people are still playing Mass Effect Three multiplayer, which I'm like, kind of flabbergasted at, but I think again the servers are still up for three. The servers are still up for Andromeda, I, I would imagine. Um, and that's, we'll eventually get through Andromeda uh, momentarily. Um, but yeah, uh, I really hope that they'll add it to the, tr if, if the trilogy is not, you know, just remember if it's real, I hope they add it to that, you know, not a guarantee. Um, and again, if Mass Effect 5 is the real thing, I hope I, they add it for that as well. Um, 
But yeah, with Mass Effect 3, um, sorry, I can't, like, think of anything else that was, um, uh, great about it. I guess the only last thing I could say, which I kind of wish they did it for Andromeda, because I don't know if they did, and I can't remember, they added, like, environmental stages to, um, the regular rotation of maps or whatever, like, um, gosh, uh, I think on uh, one of the stages you could close the doors and like um, it was like a rocket test or whatever and there was like acid rain on one map and then um, gosh I, I can't like remember everything about it but um, but it was a it was always a cool addition and stuff um, sorry go I was gonna say um, naming conventions I was always um, for the bowls, I named them goofy things. Like, I colored that one green, and I thought of him like a ninja turtle. So, um, that's why that one's called Raphael. I think I don't name them like other goofy things. Like, I think I named the um, the techie one. I think with the decoy. I think I named him like Ragnarok. Um, but like, kind of like goofy names in the vein of the uh, biotic god in Mass Effect Two or whatever that guy. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I range from Goofy to Realistics. A lot of names I, um, that, you know, were, like, funny or, or, or important to me. Um, sorry, I think the next thing I was going to say was, um, we'll continue to Andromeda. And, um, Andromeda for what it is, I think it was great. I think the jump added so much, you know, variety and, um, you know, um, different, uh, tactic options. Like, I, I, again, it's like with Advanced Warfare, and maybe Advanced Warfare will be a future podcast, but, um, uh, gosh, uh, I'm trying to think of it. Um, but it, again, it gave you, um, you could, like, um, go and crash down with, like, dive kicks and all that and, uh, and do, like, all sorts of other things. So, and again, it's like, um, since it was kind of like Advanced for for the jumping, they added, like, more vertical aspects to maps and all that. So, and, um, and I think it just, you know, it added more variety to the game, and I was, I was excited by, or I was, I was happy about it. Um, I feel like, again, they had a lot of the duplicate problems, like, from 3, where, you, you know, you get all, a lot of the same weapons and, you know, characters and, and whatnot. And, um, I think it's like, I think it's like an RPG thing, where I, I still kind of go... I am very annoyed by uh, the fact of the matter where it's like you, you know, you, you want the legendary stuff, but um, uh, it never really gives it to you. Like, I I think I only maybe got five of the N7 weapons for maybe seven tops. Right, right. That, that was a big thing in Andromeda. I didn't play the single player, but I, I watched a lot of it, and it seemed pretty solid. I, like, so many people, you know, so many people highlight the negative aspects of, you know, of something, and that's just, you know, that's because I think it's like, it's, you know, it's, it's popular to be super critical of something, and, and, you, you know, you can't just do that. I think I was possibly super critical with Star Wars Battlefront 2 when I, re you know, uploaded that podcast, but other than that, um, or, or maybe I was, I don't remember, I don't think I was, I, it's, it's hard to, cause I, I remember that's like, maybe like a month ago, and, um, I, you know, I think that's the only thing that I gotta possibly be, um, critical about is Star Wars Battlefront 2, but. Other than that, you know, I can't, I can't think of too much, you know, to say that's bad about it. Um, but yeah, I think, it, you know, it's unfortunately so many people highlight all the negative, all the negative stuff and, you know, are super critical about it and they can't appreciate for what, 
what the you know what the idea is what the concept is what the game is and um so yes and uh with so no you're right with andromeda i think you're, you're right you you walked around a lot um and i you know you're right that's probably why they added the jump so you could it wouldn't be as um uh boring or whatever um if you were just uh simply walking on the ground i forgot to besides the jump they added the dash the dash was really cool I don't think it helped too much with dodging because, again, like, I felt like a lot of the AI's problems were that a lot of their bullets or their, like, shots homed onto you. So, you know, it was kind of um, difficult to uh, significantly dodge and then return fire. I think my favorite character during multiplayer... Did, did you play any of the multiplayer for Andromeda Shrimpy? Because, um... I think my favorite character from multiplayer was uh, um, was one of the Sentinels. They put down like a physical like uh, light shield or whatever, and it would block enemies. And so you could kind of like hang out in an area for a while, kind of like Mass Effect Three, um, the original layout for um, uh, Firebase White or whatever before they added the wall and um, <laughs> and it made it it made it more difficult to try and get golds on that and and you know we don't talk about platinum because platinum gets platinum gets stupid <laughs> with all the stuff um uh but what was i gonna say oh, okay i gotcha no you're right it's it's definitely acquired taste and again like what i brought up earlier is that you know we um getting the legendary weapons or the n7 weapons it was it was always difficult because you had to pay for like those big packages <laughs> um um or rather big crates um and those crates i think you have to play like oh uh, gosh i'm trying to think if you played one gold match at least in the sense of three i think you would have to at the very least, um, uh, I think you would have to play two gold matches or probably three silver matches. I don't remember. It's it's been a while, um, but I remember with Andromeda too. They were kind of you know they're stingy with the credits, so that you know they want you to play as much as possible. But again, yeah, um, getting uh, getting legendary weapons is hard. I think you know as our you know again uh, for RPGs it's like. Um, you know, you worked on this weapon for so long, and then you make it as hard as hell to get that. Like that, didn't, that never made sense to me, especially for a random drop. And um, you know, I uh, I think like if if ma if multiplayer is um, added back to the trilogy or mass or or is added to Mass Effect Five, I hope at the very least, you know, they make it so that you see more legendary weapons or see more of the N7 weapons because, um, they, uh, um, most, most of the time they're great, so. Um, what else can we talk about before we end it for the day? I think with Andromeda, I think again it's like you know people were too were still were too you know super critical about it. So it you know did you know defer, or deterred or deferred people to other games. So I think same thing with Anthem with and Anthem. I you know I didn't think about it, but Anthem might be a future podcast. If did you? I was gonna say, did you play Anthem, Shrimpy? Because I remember. Uh, um, Anthem had the, er, oh, okay for uh Shrimpy. Um, I I honestly I don't remember, um, uh any of the endings. I think I. I I see what you're what you're saying of Anthem. Um. No, you're right. Those are funny words. 
I, I remember. Um, but yeah. Uh, gosh. I think the endings, it was like, I think the only one that I kind of remember is the apology one or the fourth one that they issued. I think it was like, or it's like, or it might have been one of the normal endings. I don't remember, but it's like you and the Reapers and like everybody else became this symbiotic machine like race or whatever. And that's that's the only ending I remember. And I understand it's like so much, you know, you put so much, uh, you played so much of it, and then the ending kind of is just kind of like a flop. I, you know, I understand, but you know, you don't need to get bent out of shape for it. Um, but yeah, and um, Anthem will probably be another podcast, but um, um, Anthem is uh, it's, um. Yeah, I had high. I know you're right. I had, I had extremely high hopes for Anthem because again, and it was, it was one of those like, and you know, it's it's super great to fly and it's super, um, uh, but again, it was um like Destiny one or as some publications like it, it was Destiny one where it was like, they kind of didn't prepare ahead of time and they had, I remember for the beta they had atrocious um. Well, never mind. Yeah, Anthem will probably be part of this one. Anthem, uh, Anthem's beta servers had atrocious problems. I remember they had out that VIP thing, and I just, you know, I think I couldn't connect. And, um, yeah. <laughs> and then when the game finally came out, um, you know, uh, it was alright. It was still like the great thought of flying and jumping and all that. You know, that's there and it's it's fun. Um, wait, so wait, overhaul for for Mass Effect or for Anthem? Because I didn't ha hear about Anthem for a while. I think the last thing I saw was that they had a Christmas. Their work, they were, they had some Christmas update, and I was like, all right. I think the funny thing about Anthem too, it's like they're probably working on some like long haul thing that's like, where it's like you know almost as laughable as Destiny's ten year plan. So, but I don't remember again too much. Okay, right, overhaul for Anthem. So so no Anthem two yet, right? <laughs> I, I wanted, I was, I was thinking about for Destiny and going, like, I kind of wanted to already release, uh, Destiny 3, because then it'll be, like, D3 Mighty Ducks, and Destiny 2 is D2 Mighty Ducks, or whatever the hell the subtitles were for each movie. In fact, what time is it? Almost 30 minutes. Okay, well, I think it's a good time to probably call it. And um, hopefully, um, um, you know, the overhaul I have will make the game better. I think, uh, I think. I would imagine so, or be, before we end, I would imagine so, Shrimpy, because, um, it's like with, uh, they were saying something where it's like, you know, the last update for Battlefront 2, or Star Wars Battlefront 2, they were saying, like, there was intense rumors about Battlefront 3 already, and then, um, I was just going like, oh my god, or oh my, uh, that, um, that that Battlefield three uh, air quotes will be coming out, finally coming out. But um, I think they would do Destiny three because again they they said they would 
but at the same time now with Destiny 2, um, they're consistently updating it with, you know, like a, like an RPG now, like World of Warcraft and all that. That they'll have con uh, consistent um, content drops and all that. Instead of a direct sequel. But I just... I just I I just wanted Destiny three so because um, again D D three sounds sounds great and D D two not so much. Um, but yeah, I I think um it's a good time to call it. Um, thank you Shin for for being in and. Uh, Oh right for squadrons and um, squadrons and um, and possibly um, uh, Jedi Fallen Order two or something like that because no you're right it's gonna be like it's gonna be like in the middle of winter or some middle like of like another summer or something like that all right thanks Shin for staying in um, and then they'll be like. And then they'll be like, oh, surprise, here comes Star Wars Battlefront 3, and look at all this new stuff. And, um, yeah. And, um, and then, uh, yeah, they, um, and then they'll be like, oh, look at this cool trailer. Get hyped for it. Get ready to pay, apparently, $70 now, because that might be the new normal for, um, for, um, uh, video games in general. And I think that's just absolutely ridiculous. But, um, I don't know if, if like, I hope if they, if, or, you know, if and when they have Star Wars Battlefront 3, that they'll have a campaign that's not, um, uh, what's it called? As not formulaic, but um, as as like a Call of Duty campaign. I know it's like Battlefield has campaigns, but I don't remember extensively except for I think I only played one stage of a uh, of Bad Company, and that was all right. So, but um, but not as um, you know, linear as a as a call of duty or something like that so hopefully again with star wars battlefront they'll they'll change the formula and um go on from there so yeah anyway thanks thanks again shin for stopping by um i think shrimpy that's a good time to call it um right right yeah Make make this make it so that the uh, character doesn't die in the in the same vein of the story. Do you, did you download those DLC extra episodes? And like that that was kind of semi disappointing. The main the main character for Battlefront Three will die in in the first like five minutes or something like that, and they'll be brought back like Commander Shepard. Gotcha, because, um, yeah, it was, again, it's like, sure, I guess I could do that for the, um, for Star Wars Battlefront 2, but also kind of like, it kind of defeats the purpose of in introducing an original character because you're, um, you're introducing it and killing off said character in the same span of the game, and and you know i get it um video games have to be so self-contained that like that you know if you only had one thing to go on that you could you know figure it out from there but again like it just kind of seemed defeatist i guess to i don't know go all that work and then just be like oop nope now they're dead
they they died of dysentery on the Oregon Trail. Uh, I I didn't I didn't and and Del Mico were on the Oregon Trail pursued by Kylo Ren and they um, Kylo Ren kept on getting um, uh, a dysentery. Sorry, it was an obscure joke, or not obscure, but weird joke. But I, I think that's a good time to <laughs> to end it off. That thank you, thank you again for Shen for stopping by, and, th and thank you, Shrimpy, for staying in this, uh, you know, for this amount of time. So, um, and uh, I'm Reroll Zero. Thank you for you know, thank you for watching, listening, and this is me signing off.